Hey, welcome back Design Squad and in this video by one of the requests or actually by few of them throughout the times I'm gonna cover and show you how to advance your repeaters and add filter functionality. Now, I'm going to show you how to add the filtration, but also the sorting, which I'm going to cover in the next video. But for those who are new to repeaters, you definitely have to go back into our playlist. The link is in the description and find the one where I'm adding repeater options for this specific prototype or just, you know, upskill yourself with repeaters before actually proceeding with this video because we're going to build on top of the existing prototype and on top of existing case I already shown before. So go back if you're new to this, if you're confident enough, let's proceed and let's implement the filtration of the actual data set. As you can see, I have a simple prototype where I have multiple repeater options and the only things what actually are covered in data set are is name of the employee, let's say, their title, their team, and I can also delete one of the items if I want to. And then I can also add an item if I also want to. And let me just add something, something, select a team, boom, and then it adds a new item and then I can add as many items as I wish. But this prototype is limited because I can't really, let's say if I would have 100 items added or by default in my data set, uh, let me just show you, in a data set would have defined, let's say, I don't know, 100 items like so, because as you can see, all of these are now presented to a repeater here. Well, I would need to then somehow I don't know, either expect users to look for every entry, but that would be frustrating. So I can anticipate what our, my user research or testing would actually result in, uh, knowing that, you know, you can always enable users to improve their efficacy to achieve their goals, to improve efficiency of how they achieve those goals. And so we can always enhance the experience in that. And filtering is one of those options as well as sorting. But let's focus on the filtering in this specific video. Let's jump in into actual technicalities and nitty gritty things. So first and foremost, I need to decide how my filter is going to look like. And at the basic, because if you remember when I create my entry, I have these options, which is basically the teams. So perhaps I'm going to show you a filter, which is exactly like this uh, for the teams. You know, you can just tick and select the team which you want. And so really quickly, I'm going to create a panel with the checkboxes for each of the teams. And then you, people can actually select all or select none and, and so forth. And so I created a simple filter option here and I'm gonna create a dynamic panel. Nothing is yet interactive in this one. So let me just say this is filter options, let's say. And then I need the trigger of how I'm gonna show it. So it could be an icon, let's say, with a filter icon, like a funnel. And since I, now I inserted two triggers, one is going to be to exit, one is going to be to open it. I'm just going to quickly add those two states. I uh, just show and hide. So let's say this one is for hiding. And then the other one is going to be immediately to show it. Just copying it across, pasting it in, overlapping. You don't have to use hotspots. This is purely for convenience and quickness of it. So I don't have to check that the actual space of the interactive element is good enough or not. But this is going to create an effect which is sort of what we're looking for. And if we quickly preview, you're going to see that the filter is filters are all present, but nothing is actually working yet. And I can just close open close. I can also add an item if I want to. So I have that flexibility. But now let me just quickly one thing adjust that amount, we didn't really need an extra item, I just noticed, and also maybe just tiny bit edit the text. And now we are ready to add actual options, right? Once I load my page, I automatically actually preload the data set values. For example, this is item C name, C team, C row, and they're all preloaded in this data set, right? It's automatic. But now every time I want to make a switch, so let's say I uncheck, I would need to hide it or show it depending on which switch it is. Action now has a lot of automated things, but some of it is actually also a bit of a manual labor. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So, you know, we have these checkboxes and they're all separate items. By default, you could select them, but let me show you first what happens if I unselect them, for example. So. You, we could just simply add a new interaction saying, hey, once it's selected, 
do something about it. And Axure, if you notice, has this option add filter. Now we could just immediately go ahead and just add a temp filter called, let's say, team and set the rule where, you know, here is an example, for example, item state equals CA, do something about it, go straight into function, and then insert variable, and we need this item CT team, which I called in our data set. If I select that, and just do equals equals, which means that it's equal to engineering, if double E, like so, that's a syntax where I'm gonna go ahead and just click OK. And if you're not sure about this, just pause it, uh, note this down. And this is quite simple syntax, especially if you have developed anything in, if, let's say, JavaScript or PHP or any other programming languages, you should know about it. If not, just pause it and, and always slow down and see exactly what I mean by I mean. But this is a variable name, which we define a data set. This is the value of a variable, which is basically one of these items. And if I click OK, and click preview, you're going to see that once I enable this filter, only engineering is visible. Now, Axure is a bit tricky. So let's say if I would unselect, nothing happens. But if I go back to it and just have on unselect the swell state interaction on unselected, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the filter. We can say it to remove all the filters or we can save it the name of a filter, but let's just remove all the filters. And immediately you're gonna see the effect that if I select it, only this is shown, if unselected, all this is shown. So it's simple as that, right, for now. Now, you would think that, oh, we can just probably replicate the same behavior to experience design and delivery management, which is sort of true. However, it's also a bit more complicated. So let's say if I would just copy those two behaviors to experience design, and paste it in. And instead of engineering, I'm just going to replace it with experience design, like so, and again, remove the filters, you're going to see that it's not that pretty or not, not that easy. So if I select engineering, it selects engineering. If I now unselect, it goes back. If I select experience design, it shows experience design. But now if I do both, it doesn't really work that way. It just literally replaces each other. As you can see, it doesn't stack up as we would want to. And stacking up is a bit more complicated way. And so if you're ready for that advanced thing, here's how you would stack it up. As you can see by default, I have all of these selected because all of them are visible uh, at the moment of actual loading. We're showing all of the items. But if you would want to start enabling filters and adding multiple filters, overlaying filters, that's how you would do this. I would add new interaction and I would select on selection change. And here is where I would start putting the cases for each of these. So this is how it would look like. I would go ahead and just say enable cases and case one would be, let's say, if selected, selected state of this equals false which is basically unselected, then I would hide one of the items like so. And then I can just add a filter for this case. Add filter, repeater, and all I need to do really is just item dot C team equals, be careful what you type here. If you type engineering, because it has to be case sensitive, like so. Actually here, I would need to say not equal because so then we're saying did take it out like this and we can immediately preview just for that benefit of one single demo boom as you can see it takes out one of the items that's pretty good progress so far and then just i'm gonna copy the case and i'm just gonna make all of them ifs so they're equally important and then i'm gonna say selected case off which is the second item and we need to check experience design equals false here we would want them to do experience design design like so two and then we need another one of these for checking the third checkbox delivery manager delivery management that's false and again that's syntax and once you define this uh, don't worry we are going to define it for all of them, but we are not going to have to do like 30 cases. You can just copy paste. That's the best bit about Axure. 
delivery management and a case four, the last one is going to be about the sales, which we don't really even have items, but just in case the users will enter and add a new type of thing. And if it's false, we can just remove it or add respectively like so. So we have now four cases and, but that's only assigned to one checkbox. What I would do next is I would just take this and paste it for each of these one, two, three, like so with a caveat that some of it needs to be edited because here I say this, as you can see, so this checkbox, and if you haven't defined it for each of them, you might need to go back and just redefine it. And instead of this, this is going to be the, um, engineering because that's not defined yet. And, and the same for here, here, we are going to need engineering as well. Maybe you should have defined it right away. It's up to you. And here as well, engineering so that all of the checkboxes are covered when we check that it's changed. And one thing before we actually preview, totally forgot to remove all the, uh, the checkboxes for remove other filters. I'm going to show you exactly in a minute what I mean by that, because every time we basically are firing it up, it's going to think that we're removing all the filters and then disregarding all the other statements. So I'm going to go ahead and go through all of these. Boom. And so let's check it. Now all of them should work perfectly fine. So if I remove engineering, it disappears. If I remove experience design it disappears, we have no sales. If I remove deliver manager, all of them disappears. However, once I make them disappear, they don't reappear. And that's the next step, a next iteration. So now we want to make them come back, right? So it's really, really simple. All you need to do here is add another case. And if here is going to be, you know, a case, whatever, you can just add its selection true which is the opposite of that. And just let me bring it up or you can bring it down. It doesn't matter, but it's going to be a separate if statement. As you can see, all of them are ifs. It doesn't overthrow. And here, all I want to really do is just add an additional action where I'm going to remove all the filters. And I can just go ahead and paste that to every single one. Just make sure that it's uh, the if is toggled. So it's not just an L statement like this and another one toggle if and I'm just dragging up so you can actually see what I'm doing. And the same here too, just like fifth, but I'm just going to toggle it again. And don't forget to check if there's any else's just do them into ifs because it's going to cling like so. And let's preview you, you all need to do is just add the true statement. Cool. Filtering. Now we disable engineering experience design. If we enable engineering or experience design, it's all there. And now we have ourselves a functional filter. It's simple as that. I mean, it's quite tricky to be honest, especially for a beginners. It must be, you might need to go back to repeaters or how to make a repeater to begin with. Or you might need to d dig deeper of how I made these, but just pause this video. If you're not sure what's going on, as you can see, I made all the statements here and I showed you exactly where I made mistakes, uh, like removing the, all the filters. If you're not sure how to make it again, let me show you. So this is one, you can pause the video and check it. This is second one. This is third one. This is fourth one. And as you can see, they're almost identical to an extension where here I'm in, instead of this, I could also select engineering like so. And then all of these are going to be identical for each of his checkboxes. So we're running the same algorithm whenever I select. And so if you can get one done like so and specify it like this for however items, how many items you have, then you can make your checkboxes to be functional, just like I did. Again, experiment with your prototypes. You can take it forward. You can do any other way you actually imagine. If you have any other ways, leave a comment down below. Give a like, subscribe to the channel. I really hope it is useful. And as per usual, I'll see you next time.